Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Hampstead Council meeting. Um, it's a bittersweet and, uh, and a fun night. We, we do have a little bit of a changeover tonight with uh, a changeover in the council as a result of yesterday's election. Nothing like being elected one day and stepping into, uh, into office the next. So the meeting's called to order. Please rise for the opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we submit ourselves to you as your servants and the servants of the people of Hampstead who place their trust in us. Please allow every word that is spoken and every action taken to be in the best interest of Hampstead for everyone gathered here tonight to be a stabilizing influence in these unsettled times. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> in these unsettled times. <clears throat> The Lord bless this meeting and our town. And it also asks that we um, pose for a moment of silence for uh, Corporal Keith Heacock, the uh, Delmar police officer who died in the line of duty. Thank you. Do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, there's <coughs> dust floating around up here, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, Tammy will do the roll call. Mayor Nevin. I'm here. <laughs> Councilwoman Duff. Here. Councilwoman Painter. Here. Councilman Renahan. Here. Councilman Thomas. Here. Councilman Unglesby. Here. Thank you. And we'll do the minute approvals from our meeting on April 13th. Would you Move like to uh, accept? Marlene, would you like to second? Sure, I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Tammy, when you're ready. Town manager's report and Main Street update. I was looking at my staff report. I know it looks small, but we've been spending a lot of time on different projects, the elections, the budget. So it, it's been a busy month. <clears throat> and with our Main Street, Main Street revitalization projects, the crews are working towards the completion of the traffic signal and lighting punch list. <clears throat> Once all the punch list items are addressed, a final inspection will be conducted by State Highway. That will include town staff and our inspector. Crews may remain on Main Street afterwards to address items discussed during this inspection. Uh, we are currently working with State Highway on a maintenance agreement for the traffic signals located at Northwoods Trail and Gill Avenue intersections. When the project is completed and the road is transferred to the town, we will own these signals along with the road and lamp post and the other improvements. Our water, water main replacement project, Mid-Atlantic continues to work on the replacement of the remainder of the 1936 water mains. They have completed the installation of w new water lines at Shiloh Avenue, Upper Beckleysville Road, and Hillcrest Road. I think it finished all the tie-ins today. They will begin work on West Street from Reineman Avenue to Tani Alley, and then they will move to Ralph Avenue. So the bypass piping always remains until they finish the service connections. So have they, is a bypass piping still at, at the other roads or they've removed those already? There, there's no bypass piping up Hillcrest. Okay. Okay. So just at Hillcrest. Um, our commercial and residential projects are still moving forward and we continue to work with new businesses. We have had several meetings with county staff and developers involving our various projects, including the North Carroll High School property. Pentex Ventures has received final site plan approval for the construction of a Dollar General at 832 South Main Street. Prior to construction, the current building needs to be demolished. The county has approved the, the demolition permit, but Pentex is waiting for bg &E to disconnect the electric service and gas line before they can begin. <clears throat> and the plan is to finish clearing the site within a month, hopefully, if, if we can work things out with bg &E. uh, Finance Department auditors will be in uh, town office next week for interim testing in preparation of year-end closing. Um, FY2020 budgets be introduced at tonight's meeting and will be presented for approval at the June council meeting. A uh, budget workshop will be scheduled by the end of May, which I think you were going to get to discuss, discuss later. Hampstead Day, we had the fourth and final meeting of the Hampstead stakeholders last week and 
at that time they had 60 vendors that have already registered to participate and just a reminder to everybody Hampstead Day is Saturday May 29th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Main Street will be closed to all vehicle traffic from Reinemann Avenue to Shiloh Avenue with the Gill Avenue intersection remaining open to cross traffic the areas of Hawksville Road to Shiloh Avenue and then the northern end at uh, Reinemann Avenue to Route 482 will be open to local traffic only. Parking will not be allowed in the entire area from 9 p.m. on Friday, May 28th, until after the event on Saturday. And um, I did have a staff update to add to the staff report. Um, we just had our front desk person, our administrative assistant, Ciamara Almendez, uh, let us know this week that she will be her family's moving back to Florida to be close to their family I know we all had that same look Deb <laughs> and uh, so we will be posting a job advertisement soon but she was a wonderful addition to our staff and she will definitely be missed having having been here for the last year a lot more um, it's you know you get every every flavor coming in at uh, town hall to that window and the graciousness and professionalism with what she handled everybody was uh, truly um, well above standards that we've seen in the past so yes. she did a great job always had a smile on her face yep um, chief I'm gonna go out of order tonight since we're switching over so I'll let I'll go with your report next Good evening, everyone. Uh, during the month of April, with reference to traffic safety, uh, we investigated seven traffic accidents. Three were reportable. Four were minor property damage, damage only. Two of the crashes took place at the 42 traffic circle. One was a DUI case. Three were taken. Uh, three took place on Main Street and two on other town roads. The speed signs were placed at eight locations for a total of 73 days of display. Uh, other traffic enforcement included 87 selective enforcements over a 29-hour period, six citations, and 75 warnings were issued during those activities. Overall, traffic enforcement included 127 citations and 153 warnings. We conducted a, um, 1,076 property checks at businesses and schools. In the serious crime category, we investigated one simple assault of the second degree. Uh, five adults were taken into custody for various traffic violations. Six DUI arrests were made, one warrant service, and one juvenile was charged with possession of alcohol. In the training department, we conducted 48 hours of training, uh, included several traffic-related uh, classes, What's Next Maryland, which references what the anticipated uh, traffic challenges are going to be in the future here. Uh, we completed courses in computer, computer security basics, developing effective communication skills. Uh, our administrative assistant, Ms. Geiger, completed a Excel 2016 introductory course through the Leadership Development Institute that uh, the Training Commission runs down in Sykesville. Uh, we completed uh, collecting evidence classes, redacting records, uh, advanced patrol tactics, uh, training artifacts. Uh, our DRE completed his recertification process this month. Uh, infotainment on vehicle technologies was based, which is basically how we should recognize issues where with all the current technology that's out there, cell phones, things that are in a car, uh, how younger drivers are a little bit more distracted than some of us uh, more seasoned drivers. Uh, we completed training with communication with younger generations, data-driven approaches to traffic safety, distracted pedestrian issues, uh, and traffic enforcement, uh, basically the, the, what they call the new paradigm for the future. We participated in, in the uh, Hampday, Hampstead Day planning meeting. Uh, we also conducted a car seat refresher course over at the Burry Patch. Uh, we attended the Fields HOA as well as planning and zoning, annual budget meetings we participated in, obviously. Uh, we were here for the night for the Canada Election Forum, forum and we participated in the Team Northwest Ronald McDonald uh, Charity Walk. And the last thing, if I could add in there, it's not on our script. I'm just going to second what Tammy said a few minutes ago, uh, speaking for the police department. You know, we're going to miss CMR at the front desk. She's 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 a great lady, and we're going to miss her. So that's all I have. Questions for Chief? All right, we'll bounce around. Dave, oversights. Okay, water. 
April 2021 average water usage was 329,000 gallons per day. May 2021 average water usage so far is 333,000 gallons per day. Rainfall total for April 2021 was 1 1.9 and rainfall total so far for May 2021 is 2.6. Thank you. Deb, planning and zoning. Uh, planning and zoning met on Wednesday, April 28th, and we had two sign approvals, one for Church of the Nazarene at 1340 North Main Street, and one for a new business, the Chef Jeff Experience, which is a restaurant catering business at 1005 South Main Street. We also approved some new paint, new painting, one from Church of Nazarene as well, and the other a residential property at 1133 South Main, which took advantage of the bucket of paint program, which will be great because they did have some before and after pictures and it looks, it's going to look great. Um, we had an introduction of the final plan for Ridge Engineering Expansion at 3987 Hampstead, Mexico Road. They did receive the stormwater approval from the county. And we approved the final plan of Dollar General at 834 South Main Street with the new iron fence rather than the original split rail. Um, originally, they had told us the demolition would have been one to two weeks, which would be around now. But according to Tammy, waiting for the BG&E and gas lines to be cut off. And we approved their parking waiver at Dollar General as well. There are 37 spots required and 32 are on the site plan. That's it. Okay, Wayne. The uh, Hampstead train station committee starting up the music in the park again this year. Uh, it's only gonna be on the second Saturday of the month. For June 12th, we have Hickory Wind and for July 10th, we have bootleg. Still trying to book the bands for August and September. I got an I, I got one for you. I heard. Okay. I, I told him yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, Tree Commission should be starting up the meetings next month. Okay. That's all I have. Joe, final oversight report, and if you have any closing thoughts or I do departing thoughts, feel free. Oh, geez, I do. Gosh, I do. Where do you start? <coughs> okay, we'll start with parks first. Uh, program open space fu grant funding. Chief Sites Park, we will be submitting a request for bid later this month for removal and replacement of the walking path. The rest of the equipment will be watered and our wonderful public works team will assist with placement in the summer months. War Memorial, we will begin renovations in this area to utilize program open space funding. Preliminary items include tree removal and park sign replacement. Now this is under program open space. Now under community parks and uh, playgrounds, we have received preliminary approval on the renovation project. We are awaiting uh, the public, uh, the Board of Public Works approval, and once we receive that, we will begin moving on the renovations. Uh, we have an introductory meeting on Friday with our vendor and designer to discuss the park plan and layout. And uh, as for sustainable community renewal, we received confirmation today that we were approved for the sustainable community renewal. Uh, special thanks to Jim and his team. Yep. And that's the last parks report. Now, my last comments. First of all, on a personal note, thank you to all of you who have um, expressed your condolences, concerns, prayers for my dad passing. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Um, you know, I, it's about parents. I, find, I realized something over the last week about my dad passing. It's no matter how old you are or how sick you are, you're never, ever ready to give your parents up. So thank you all for your kind thoughts. I really, really appreciate it. Now, as for my final thoughts, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the people of Hampstead that voted in 2009, 13, and 17 elections, and more specifically, the people that voted for me. <laughs> you gave me the opportunity to represent you. I hope that with every vote I cast, casted over the last eight years, I voted your conscience as well as mine. I hope I didn't let you down. Thank you to the staff here at Town Hall. Tammy, you, Christy, Cheryl, Jim, Siwamara, all you guys have been fantastic to me over the years, whether it's a simple question or a why do we do that conversation. Christy, I don't know where I would have been without your education on grants. Thank you for your help. 
Thank you for helping the people of Hampstead every day. Kevin, you and your guys at Public Works are always on point and great at keeping us educated on the finer points of the inner workings of what makes this town run. Thanks for the town insight, the water information over the years. It has proved very valuable to me as a councilman. Your department's quick and effective response is valuable to this town every single day. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. When I was elected, I was given the oversight of the Hampstead Police. I accepted it with great trepidation, but in my opinion, it proved to be the easiest and most enjoyable of all the oversights that I had, and I had it for eight years. When you have a chief like David Snyder, it can't help but be easy and enjoyable. Chief, you have them all running in the right direction, and it's testament to your wisdom, organization, and leadership. You have given Hampstead a police department that it is truly proud of. Thank you, and good luck in the future. A couple of months ago, one of my Raven tailgate buddies asked me what was my greatest accomplishment as a councilman, and I had no problem looking him square in the eye and telling him I didn't have any. <laughs> We're not a council that goes out and have a town project completed, beat our chest, and label it as our own for the simple reason that it would diminish the efforts of so many that worked so hard to make it actually happen. However, I would always be damn proud to say that I was on the Hampstead Town Council that settled the long-running Oakmont Green suit, oversaw the Main Street revitalization, provided a new water main for the town, reestablished or refurbished all the playgrounds and town limits, kept taxes still among the lowest among <coughs> Carroll County municipalities, and have provided a bright business future for years to come just to name a few things that I can say that I was only part of that made this town better. What will stick with me most? The eight-year-old girl teaching us how to feed the hungry. The police officers that made several families' Christmases a little bit better by taking them shopping. The farmer's market vendors who went out of their way to send a get well wish to a four-year-old girl fighting cancer. A former councilman, now town employee, raising money for Ronald McDonald Charities. All the above, I had the privilege of meeting, knowing, or working with during my last eight years. They are what makes Hampstead extraordinary. They are our neighbors. It's what I will remember most about my last eight years as a councilman. In closing, I would love to, I would love to leave you with words from my two favorite sportscasters of not so long ago. I think Vince Bagley and Chris Thomas at WBAL said it best when they said in signing off, it's been a pleasure and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>
serving the town and working with amazing employees at Town Hall, Public Works, and the Police Department. And I'm serious, Joe, you said it all. I, I just can't add anything to that. Thank you. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks, Marlene. <laughs> Wayne, you asked me if you... Yeah, if I could say a few words sure. about Councilwoman Duff. Um, it's been a pleasure hey, and an honor. Hey, stop. Don't do that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He's going to anyway. Going to anyway. It's been a pleasure and an honor to work with you over the years. Um, in my 28 years on the council, I know of no other council person has worked harder, appreciated the town more, done more for the town, been more involved with the town's employees, public works department, the police department, and you have really shown me some things about being a good council person. I really appreciate all that you've done for the town, and I think that uh, whatever you plan to do next, the rest is going to be well deserved. Thank oh, you, Marlene. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else where I go? Go. All right, we're good. So, um, so the mayor's report. Um, before I get into Joe and Marlene, it's been a busy month. Um, Chief Snyder mentioned several things. Tammy mentioned several things. Candidate forums, Ronald McDonald House walk um, that, that Jim Rourke had them come to Hampstead and do was a, was a great event. Budget meetings, which uh, resulted in the introduction of a budget tonight, which still needs more work. Uh, Hampstead Day prep, and we're just hoping Mother Nature shines on us on May 29th with, with uh, the Lions Club bringing Hampstead Bay, Day back to Main Street and us being able to close the road for the first time. And then uh, Keith is, uh, is the follow-up to Marlene with the farmer's market. He had the vendor lunch, and Wayne was at that too, but I stopped in for a few minutes, said a few words. Tammy was there as well. Uh, I, Marlene, you, you know it's in good hands, and it's a result of your efforts that it is. Um, so that's the business side. Uh, on the personal side here, um, you know, as you can tell, Joe and Marlene have decided to retire from public service and, and both have served our town so extremely well. Um, start with Joe. Um, you know, it's, we've had a lot of people come through here. Wayne has been a constant, I've been a constant, um, but uh, Marlene for 12 years and, and Joe for eight years on the council and four years before that on planning and zoning and board of zoning appeals. So we're losing two stalwarts here tonight. Basically, Joe started out on BZA in, in 2019 when then uh, Mayor Shoemaker asked him to serve, and then he moved over a year later in the Planning and Zoning Commission, and as you know anything about Hampstead, there's been a lot to consider as far as uh, planning goes and growth. He served there for two, three years before he ran for the council in 2013, and he served in that position now for eight years. Uh, during his tenures, Joe's oversights, um, he mentioned the police department and public and parks and recs, um, and he mentioned, you know, Christie being the backdrop, but... Uh, We've received a record number of funds during Joe's tenure, and, the, and it's benefited all the citizens of Hampstead, so we m very much appreciated that. Joe also helped, he didn't mention it, but he, he also helped review all the submissions for all the college scholarship applications that we've received <coughs> over the years to make sure worthy candidates receive them. There were four, far more uh, worthy candidates than there were awardees, yeah. but the budget only allows for so much. Um, and in, in a departure, you know, Joe's usually the quiet guy over here, and, and tonight, you know, that was an awesome closing statement, uh, but he, he's like H, what was it back in the day, H.F. Hutton, the commercials? E.F. Hutton. E.F. E. Hutton. Hutton. Doesn't say much, but when he does, you know, you pay attention. Always on point, and anything he said was definitely worth thinking about, and so, you know, my friend, it's been a great pleasure, and uh, we can wish you nothing but uh, happiness in the future. Thank you. Miss Marlene, I uh, first ran for the council in 2019. I was still serving on the council back, or 29, sorry, and, uh, and served 12 years. Other than Wayne, we've not had a three-term council member in my tenure or recent memory before that. Um, she found her passion in public service and teaming up with Sharon Callahan and starting the award-winning Farmer's Market. Um, she was there every single Saturday for 10 years, June through September. There's a lot better things to do, but she was there on the volunteer fire department grounds, making sure everything went smoothly. Um, she is the very definition of dedication to a project, which in this case benefited our town, our main street, and our region. Uh, the, the, it was just the impact of that farmer's market is so far reaching. Um, you brought 2,000 plus people to Main Street every single Saturday, which is quite, quite an achievement. On an aside note, I mean, she thanked all the employees, but the employees have sent, you know, you, she, you've already delivered that or? Yes. Okay. 
so, but nobody knows this, or few, very few people know it, but she's made homemade treats for every single town employee. That's 20 plus employees on their birthdays for every single year she served. So homemade stuff, cakes, pies, cookies, you know, we all need to be on a diet. Um, it, it, they just show up on the council table in the back and, and you know, and you know, it's somebody's birthday, um, no fanfare. Um, but, you know, and there were also, you know, in addition to the birthdays, the just because occasions, they would, you know, a cake would show up at the police department, public works, or, or in the back here in the town hall. Um, her thoughtfulness, your presence, your smile. We've been virtual for a while, so it's already been missed, but it will be missed here at town hall. It'll be missed in the public works department, and it'll be missed in the, in the police department. And, and again, I can't thank you enough for your service. Um, these two people are the, you know, I'm going to read proclamations and things for them in a second, but these two people are the perfect examples of what citizen volunteers are. They've just served with the sole purpose of making our town a better place to live, and quite frankly, you two have accomplished your mission in spades, and I couldn't be more proud of you and, and happy to know you and call you both friends. So, well done. Well, thank you, Chris. You weren't supposed to know about those cakes. You, I never made <laughs> oh, them for the it's, council. Marlene, it is hard, hard to miss. <laughs> you, you didn't tell us not to tell. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you should have known. <laughs> so, so, in finishing up here, Joe, you're here, so you get to come out front. And Marlene will do you too. I'll be out front a lot for the rest of the night. So, Joe, we didn't, I don't know that we captured everything here, but we tried. <coughs> so, whereas Joe Renahan has served with distinction as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Planning and Zoning Commission, and the Hampstead Town Council from May of 2009 to May of 2021. Whereas we're serving on the council, Joe Renahan had the oversight responsibility for parks and recreation, during which numerous pro improvements were made. And he also mentioned the police department, and I forgot the scholarship committee. Whereas Joe Renahan consistently brought common sense judgment, professional insight, and thoughtful consideration to each decision impacting our town. And whereas Joe Renahan selflessly dedicated his time and energy to the long-term best interest of our town. And whereas Joe Renahan helped improve the quality of life in our town through his leadership on the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Planning and Zoning Commission, and the Town Council. Whereas the dedication and commitment of Joe Renahan exemplifies the American tradition of citizen volunteer and serves as a worthy example for others. Now, therefore, I, Christopher M. Devon, Mayor of the Town of Hampstead, wish our friend Joe all the best in his future endeavors and hereby proclaim May 12, 2021, Joe Renahan Day in the Town of Hampstead. And, you know, this is one of the most, you and Marlene, def whoops. <coughs> I think that's from the staff, and then a little gold dust. But there's your there's your plaque. The Distinguished Service Award presented to Joe Ranahan, and it lists out his service, and it's presented this day, May 12th, 2021. So there, there you go. Thank you, and well done. I can couldn't make you see happy. Congratulations, Joe. All right, Marlene, I'm going to do this virtually. This is a first. So, some of it repeats, and you're sharing a you're sharing a day with Joe. I thought about yesterday, <laughs> today, tomorrow, but it, today's the day. So it's okay, I'll share with Joe. That's good. Thanks, Marlene. <clears throat> Marlene Duff served with distinction as a member of the town Hampstead Town Council from May of 20, 2009 to May of 2021. And whereas we're serving on the council, Marlene Duff had the oversight and responsibility of the Hampstead Farmers Market, which she co-founded and nurtured into a community staple. Whereas Marlene Duff consistently brought common sense judgment and professional insight and thoughtful consideration to each, to each decision affecting our town, and whereas Marlene Duff self selflessly dedicated countless hours of her time and energy to the long-term best interest of our town, and whereas Marlene Duff helped improve the quality of life in our town through her leadership on the town council, and whereas the dedication and commitment of Marlene Duff exemplifies the American tradition of citizen volunteer and serves as a worthy example for others. Now, therefore, I, Christopher M. Nevin, Mayor of the Town of Hampstead, do wish our friend Marlene all the best in her future endeavors and hereby proclaim May 12th, Marlene Duff Day in the Town of Hampstead. Well done. And, I don't know, hopefully, can you, hopefully you can see this. See, she can see what's in the corner there. There That's you go. She sees. You can see that, there right? There we go. 
All right, so you get basically the same thing with the dates of your service listed. You know, I think there's a spot where you guys can hang these, hopefully prominently. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a little something extra in there from the, from the staff as well. And it's Thank you. well deserved and your service is so much appreciated. We'll put this back there so you can sneak in whenever you feel comfortable. Well, listen, and, and it's not just me who was responsible for the success of the market. It was Sharon, it was all the vendors and all the customers who came. So it, it was a joint effort. It, it clearly was, but there's always a leader in the cause, and I think that that goes for you. And, and, and Keith Johnson was in here today, and he showed me the binder you left him. So uh, talk about details. So um, well, you, know, you know what I forgot to put in there? A job description. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades is basically what it is, whatever needs to be done. So once again, very much appreciated. Thank Tammy? you. Tammy, I think you're going to read some election results and then we're going to adjourn sine die. <clears throat> The Board of Supervisors of Elections for the Town of Hampstead, duly appointed by the Mayor and qualified in accordance with the provisions of Section 66-74 of Article 6 of the Code of Public Local Laws of Maryland, Title Carroll County, Subtitle Hampstead, did on the 11th day of May 2021 hold an election at the T Hampstead Town Office, 1034 South Carroll Street, Hampstead, Maryland, for the purpose of the election of three persons to act as members of the council for the said town for a term of four years beginning on the next regular council meeting after the election. For members of the council of the town of Hampstead for a term of four years are Diane Barrett, Wayne H. Thomas, and Benjamin Zolman. Thank you. So I'll take a motion to adjourn sine die. Make a motion to Go. <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn sine die. Marlene? Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So now we'll take a five minute break, rearrange the chairs, and we'll get right back at it here. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Hampstead Town Council meeting. So now the part where the election results have been um, uh, read, we're going to seat the new members and, and the one who's been reelected. So if Diane, Ben, and Wayne will join me out front. Your right hand and we'll do the eye and then go individually first. All right, aye. Uh, Diane Barrett, Wayne H. Thomas, Ben Zolman. And then you can repeat after me in unison. Do swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do swear, swear or affirm, affirm that, that I will support, support the, the Constitution, Constitution of the United, United States. States and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And that, and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland, the town of Hampstead, and support the Constitution and laws thereof, the town of Hampstead, and support the Constitution and laws thereof, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, and I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office as a member of the Council of the Town of Hampstead. Execute, execute the, the office as a member of the Council of the Town of Hampstead according to the Constitution and the laws of this state. According, according to the Constitution and the laws of this state. state. Congratulations, Council people. Thank you. Well done. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So now you got to do some homework with Tammy. you got to sign your respective Just place. Blue? Yeah, Just blue. blue. And your two. Do you need another one? i try this one. business and the first matter of business is we elect a uh, vice president to the council is there a motion I would like to make a motion uh, to elect uh, Wayne Thomas as vice president of the council is there a second second any discussion of that all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? thank you <laughs> that doesn't change I guess I should put this back down uh, assignment of oversight responsibilities I've chatted briefly with each one of you um, so Diane's going to do the farmer's market. Wayne will have the tree commission, the train station, the music in the park. Deb's got still planning and zoning. Dave is switching over to parks and recs. And uh, he's had a, he's had a, I guess, a, um, you were looking forward to changing that up and history of the town. And then Ben's going to, being the resident engineer, he's going to take over water oversight. So we haven't had an engineer do water since Larry Hentz. Uh, that would be 1995 to 03. So. <laughs> really big shoes to fill. The yard out there is named after them. So, just saying, no pressure. <laughs> so, all right. Um, that dispense with um, most of the rest of the uh, stuff is related to the existing budget, plus uh, introducing the new budget for the new fiscal year, which will start in July. But first, we have to take care of a budget revision to the general fund, which is a transfer of $16,200 from capital reserves to police capital related to the new SUV they bought. It was a little bit after they tricked it out and had all the new things that they need to put on it, a little bit more expensive than planned. So is there a motion to make this transfer? I move to approve. Second. Second by Diane. I, we need, since it's in a budget amendment, we need a roll call vote in four-fifths. Councilman uh, Zolman? Yes. Councilman Unglesby? Yes. Councilwoman 
Painter. Yes. Hey, Councilwoman uh, Barrett. Yes. And Thomas. You're forgetting somebody. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it. Though. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. Councilman Thomas. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Got, we're going to have to get, you know, I know there's new names, so we're going to have to get you're... that all squared away through, through a curveball. <laughs> um, so the rest of it, uh, the pretty much ordinances and resolutions is the introduction, introduction of the fiscal year 2022 budget. Nobody's really seen it yet. It, the, the ink is still wet on it. Um, it's a lot more... I guess uh, um, understandable and set than it was this time last year when we had no clue what the pandemic was going to do to us and it turned out that the, the impacts of that were relatively minor but at any rate this year the tax rate is going to stay unchanged as it has I think since 2015 at 22 cents personal property tax is still unchanged at 55 cents water rates are going to have no change to them uh, the general fund the water fund still owes the general fund some money but that number is coming down nicely um, and we'll see how that continues to go um, I was going to put something in there in a to be determined column in the capital improvement plan, but we don't know what we're getting yet. There was a number thrown out in March, but then there's like now there's a formula attached to it. So we don't know what that number is going to be. Um, so there will be changes to our budget, which more than likely will be related to the capital improvement plan. I think we have until December 31 of 2026 to spend that money. So as we get more information and we figure out what money we're getting, that'll start appearing and we'll start making adjustments to the budget as we go. Um, Tammy and I got an email yesterday and it was the rules of the road related to the American Rescue Plan. It was only 151 pages and, and extensive footnotes. And today there's a fact sheet out on that 151 pages. So we're still digesting it all. I think it's just about every town in the country is doing it at this point as to what you can and can't do. So one of the things you see in the capital improvement plan is a yellow highlighted bonding for fiscal year 2022 of which really may occur this year um, of a million forty thousand dollars. That's we've been holding that bond off determining whether we can use the money for the current water line replacement from the American Rescue Plan. Maybe we can. We're still trying to figure that out that out. If not, then we'll be bonding that money. We still have plenty of needs in the water department with now, them now measuring things in trillions, um, CO2 issues, you know, you name it. There's plenty of things to do with, with our water department. We can bring it up to a lot, a higher standard than it is today, and, and $4 million or $5 million, whatever it is, doesn't go as far as it used to. So that's primarily where the money will go to. So, so that's why that number's in there is yellow. Um, we'll f hope maybe we'll change that up between now and when we pass the budget, but we need to schedule a workshop, which we'll do by email after this meeting. But I would assume, you know, look at your calendars for the next two weeks, and we'll figure out a day to sit out here and just go through things uh, and um, talk it through as to, you know, what's going where. I can tell you that uh, the sheriff has been very successful in getting increases into his um, deputy's budget so I've put increases to match it's always been our strategy to match the highest paid department in Carroll County we're not going to train our guys only to become deputies and officers of some other police department we want them to stay here um, there's you know last year there were very minor raises this year they're more substantial to the staff which is I think well deserved um, so we're you know still working through it you'll and we'll get all the details over the next couple of weeks we'll have a public hearing um, for the next council meeting and then we'll adopt the budget in the next council meeting after that public hearing um, never had a big crowd for one so we'll see what this brings out so that's that's my two cents worth or four million dollars worth for the for the budget between the capital and um, between the general fund and the water fund um, is there any other new business yes, sir. okay Thursday I'll get that after this. Thank you, though. Um, so we, we put it in reverse order, I guess, here. Introduction of Ordinance 540, which is an ordinance for the levy of taxes for the fiscal year 2022, which will begin of July, 20, July 1st of this year. So moved. And I second. Don't let everybody jump at once. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. And then there's the introduction of Ordinance 539, an ordinance to adopt the annual budget of the town of Hampstead for the period July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, which I do believe also includes the capital improvement plan. Moved to introduce. I second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And then, thank you. And then an, or, an introduction of Resolution 2021-02, 
was as a resolution maintaining water rates at the same levels um, as this past year. So, you know, we have a number written in that it would increase automatically, but we're going to change it so that it is zero. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. A uh, couple of closing comments for me before we open it up to public comment. Somewhere in here. Next, as Dave was reminding me, next Thursday there's a Carroll County MML meeting that's scheduled for the 20th, uh, 6 o'clock in Union Bridge. I believe it's going to be at the flood zone, which is come down 75, turn left on Main Street, about 150 yards up on your left. So it'll, hopefully Mother Nature is smiling like it, she is tonight and it'll be outside. What's uh, the date? I'm sorry. Next Thursday, the 20th. 20. 6 p.m. And it'll be interesting, you know, we've, uh, you know, for everybody out there, you know, there's been some turnover in municipal government this year. So it will, um, we have to elect officers, so it will be interesting. Uh, our president is no longer the mayor. Our vice president is no longer the mayor. The secretary is no longer a council person and the treasurer is new. So um, the only I'm still the district vice president, so that would stay. But we'll we'll chat amongst ourselves, get to know each other because there are some new faces there, um, and it'll, and it'll be good to get to know some new folks. Plus, I think honor some of the guys who and uh, ladies who've served our county so well in the various respective towns. So um, we got that going on, and then don't forget Hampstead Day on May 29th, eight to four. Um, you know, we'll see how this closing of the road goes. We, we got a practice run, as the chief will tell you, as one of our uh, telephone poles caught fire this week. So c required a closing of a road for a period of time. So, you know, we survived. And I'm sure Hampstead Day, you know, hopefully it's 75 and sunny. That's all we can ask for and pray for. Public comments. I know why you're here. Yeah, I was just going to talk to you after the fact. Okay. Just okay. That's fine. Is there a senior parade again this year? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, what times does the parade start, though? Six? So what they're talking about is like last year, the seniors and juniors have been robbed at high school age, have been robbed of graduation and lots of pomp and circumstance that they're typically used to. So the seniors from Manchester Valley will once again start at their campus, or they're going to start at the park in Manchester, Christmas Street Park, come down York Street, hang a left on Main, come right down through here, make a right on Gill, and go over to the old high school. And so all the graduates will be in the cars, parents, uncles, grandparents, people who want to be there will cheer them on. They deserve it. They've been, it was it was great last year, and I know that the seniors appreciated it. Um, I had one, but and this year it's nice to see that they wanted to carry on the tradition. You know, made them feel very good about graduating. Good. All right. Pub any other public comment? We really don't have any other people here. So motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? New people, one of 48 down. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And those people joining us at CMC, appreciate it. And I'm sure that I'll hear from a few of you about my banging on the table and, and whatnot. But thank you for um, viewing, viewing us on, on cable. Much appreciated. Thank you.